You guys are definitely not tired of hearing about the next generation of laptops, right? You know, those with RTX 30 series graphics cards, Ryzen 5000, Intel's 11th gen processors, RX 6000M, all of the good stuff that you most probably know about if you have watched my 10 video playlist where I'm talking about all of those things, including pricing, availability, specs, when we might see them come around, if it's CES or the second half of 2021. But in today's video, if you are unaware, we're going to be talking about the next generation of Gigabyte laptops that they're going to be unveiling at CES 2021 and we're also going to be looking a little bit at the 5900 HX and trust me you're going to be really pleased to see those results. Now, if you're new to the channel, then let me introduce myself. My name is Alex and I cover the latest news in tech and gaming on my channel, including leaks like this one. So if you happen to enjoy this video, then definitely get subscribed. Now we're going to be talking about the Gigabyte's models. And I say models because they're apparently planning to release three different ones, those being the G5, the G7 and the A7. And looking at the G series, those are going to be rocking Intel's 10th gen processor. So not 11th gen, this is sadly Comet Lake and not Target Lake as we were expecting, but maybe those are going to come out as well at some point. Now, with regards to the G5, we have seen this one rocking a 200 and... Did I say the G5? Yeah, this one is going to have a 240 hertz panel and it's going to be 1080p, but with the G7, we're going to have a 144 hertz panel also at 1080p. So, you know, depending on whatever you prefer to go with, if you want a 15.6 inch, this is going to be the G5. If you want to get the G7, then you're going to have to stick with a 17 inch laptop. Now, both of these laptops are going to be powered by an RTX 3060 graphics card and Intel's um, 10th gen processors, and they're going to be fine. But like I was saying in some of my older videos, I would expect you that uh, if you want some better gaming performance out of your laptop, you are most probably going to have to go with AMD this time around and with their 5800H that they've put on their A7. And this one is also going to be powered by an RTX 30 series graphics cards, but it's also also going to be a max P graphics card and then like looking at those things you have the 3060 on the Intel variant and the 3060 max P on the AMD now the difference between them is obviously going to be a little bit better in terms of performance as well because if you know max P is going to have the full uh, laptop or mobile TDP, whereas the Max-Q is going to be limited in terms of power and you're not going to get the same um, power or the same great FPS that you're going to see in a max peak and graphics card. Now I'm going to have an article linked in the video description, but my note is that uh, the Max P variant is going to be affected more by what the manufacturer is going to decide to do because they're more uh, free to decide whatever they want to do with this graphics card. Whereas with the Max Q variants, they are not um, allowed to tweak all of the things with regards to that mobile graphic GPU because Nvidia can tell them, you know, you need to limit it at 80 or 90 watts or whatever that might be. So if you're interested in what the difference is, then definitely check out the video description because I'm going to have an article over there or uh, just read some of the comments because a lot of people have started talking about those things in the comment section and that's beautiful, you guys. Thanks for helping each other in the comment section. We really need this to happen. Now, looking at some other interesting things, uh, we have seen that ASUS is also going to uh, have some of its models and we have already talked about the Asus Zephyrus and this one is going to be the 15 uh, SE and it's going to be powered by the 1500HX and how about we look at some Geekbench results. We have seen this one being able to score uh, 1500 points in single core scenarios and about 9,000 points in multi-core, and I was the kind of thinking of the whole, it's over 9,000 uh, meme at this point, but well, it kind of happened. The good thing with it is that you are going to be able to see some really good results in gaming as well, although I know that Geekbench is not the best uh, benchmarking tool to test all of those CPUs, but bear with me for a second. Now, we have seen that this one is going to be about 14-15% faster than an um, 10700K, and this one is of course Intel's desktop processor, and when you're thinking about it, you know, AMD's CPU is going to be 
is going to have way lower TDP compared to what Intel has been able to do with their desktop CPU. So it's definitely going to be interested how these are going to stack against each other. Now it's also going to be interesting to see what they're going to be in terms uh, they're going to do in terms of screen quality because this is also important. It's not only important that you get to 144 or 240 hertz, you know. Um, and I'm kind of forgetting to talk about something that is also interesting with regards to Gigabyte. Now with the models that I've talked about, the G5, the G7, and the A7, they seem to have some better screens compared to the Asus Tough series of laptops, but not so much so compared to the Zephyrus, uh, because I've started seeing some reviews of the uh, Zephyrus laptops for whatever reason they started popping up you know I've seen some um, from Mr. Mobile from Get Greg Salazar both great channels that you guys should be checking out um, and they seem to be a little bit better now I don't know what to expect from the next generation of laptops if they're going to make tweaks to them but if I find more information with regards to that I'm definitely going to be uh, bringing you guys those things now if you remember uh, Gigabyte is also working on some other laptops namely their whole uh, Aero, Aero series, whatever they're calling them at this point, I'm not really familiar and you're going to be seeing them on screen right now. And those uh, laptops have been listed on Azerty, which is a Dutch website, uh, but the prices, as I was telling you guys in some um, other video that I made on my channel, uh, seem to be wrong especially considering that Gigabyte has come out and told Tom's Hardware that they're wrong, but I don't really know if they're going to be wrong all across the world, because um, as some of you have also pointed out in the comments, thank you guys for that, uh, in India, in Lithuania, Greece, and all other parts in the world, they're definitely going to be a little bit more expensive than there. They might even cross this 2,000 euro, uh, you know, due to currency at <laughs> change in this point to, to see, and they're going to be a little bit more expensive. Now, we're going to see how these things are going to evolve in the future and when they're going to be available in your country, but be certain that if I find more information, I'm definitely going to be answering all of your guys' questions. So my question for you in this case would be, if you have seen all of those videos that I posted on my channel and you have already a good idea of what the laptops you can expect at CES, I already have a dedicated video talking about them, which one of those would you most certainly want to pick up? And money is no option at the moment, just, you know, um, a nice uh, thinking exercise. So let me know which laptop would you be most interested in picking up or if you have a variant that you would like to see coming out, maybe with a 5900HX and a RTX 3080, definitely let me know in the comments down below and we're going to have a discussion hopefully over there. Either way guys, this is all I had for today. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.